What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of BS for Build. In today's episode, we're working on the body swap. 2019 Mustang with a 67 Mustang body on it. We are building a Shelby tribute car, Shelby GT500 tribute car to bring to SEMA in just 12 days. We're totally on schedule, what could go wrong? Previously on this build, we started with a 2019 Ford Mustang GT, which we promptly took the body panels off and then cut the entire body off of down to a skateboard chassis. Took the 1967 Ford Mustang paneling, put the sides on, put the rear quarter panels on, put the roof on, got the back on there. Then we went and built things like a roll cage, relocated the gas fill neck. In the last episode, we mounted things like the hood, we redid the suspension, mounted the tail lights, and our brand new wheels and tires. In today's episode, it's all about the test drive. We're gonna get this thing, hopefully, we'll get all the electronics working again. We, we, we undid everything and then changed the body on it. So we're gonna redo all the electronics, hopefully get all the grounds back where they belong and stuff like that so it'll fire up. We're gonna wire in some of the modern things into the vintage car, so things like remote door unlock, remote trunk pop, car door open and close sensors, those types of things all need to work. And then we get it dialed in enough to go for a little test drive. Hopefully I don't do any Mustang things. We can't swap a quarter panel at this point. That's what's in store for today's episode. Let's get started. Before we get down to it, I wanna take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Shopify. It doesn't matter your business size. It could be a small side hustle, a brand new business, or a massive, massive business. Shopify is the answer. It offers an easy to use all-in-one commerce platform for people of any technical ability. And it's an amazing tool to help you start manage and grow your business. That's why BS for Build, our merch sales have always been done on Shopify since the very beginning. BS for Build is eight years old now, so we started selling merch about a year in, so seven years of using Shopify. And it's grown with us and expanded the entire time and been a wonderful platform. See, I used to be a software engineer and I built websites for a living while I started BS for Build and I use Shopify. It offered great support with cross-browser compatibility, different platform compatibility, so your website looks great on a mobile phone or on your desktop. These are really important things that are extremely time-consuming to code on yourself, but they just, they just work with Shopify. And it doesn't just let you sell online, it also lets you sell in person. So if you're doing a thing like a Saturday market or a meet and greet or a trade show, it's a perfect opportunity to sell in person. And you can sell across all the different platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, I guess it's called X now, and YouTube, and a lot more. And that's probably why Shopify powers more entrepreneurs than anybody else. They have millions of businesses using Shopify in over 175 different countries. So like I said, whether you're starting a new side hustle, a new small business, or you already have a large business and you wanna up your commerce game, check it out. The link is on the screen right here. It's also at the top of the description. Go to shopify.com slash B is for build for your free trial. Huge thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. Let's get down to work. Kyle's walking back to the fiberglass booth where he's gonna get started on fiberglassing our side skirts. That's just a continued work in progress. 3D printer, printing away with the hopes that by the end of today, we will be test fitting a front bumper and see how screwed we are. Or if we're not screwed at all, it should be way more positive. See if we're screwed at all. Honestly, the, the front bumper 3D print is looking really, really good. Now it's down to, did the model that I made based off of a car I found in a video game, is it the right size? That's the big question. Oscar's gonna start working on welding out some of the internals, some of our cage parts and the different things, the different metal structures that he's built in the back of the car. He's gonna work on welding those out. I'm gonna work on getting our rear bumper mounted, hard mounted in the place where it goes. This is the cosmetic rear bumper, I should say, 67, and the end caps fitting in there a little bit better. <laughs> has got the cage welded up very nicely. It looks really, really good. I'm super happy about that. Now we actually did get a email in from a structural engineer about our cage design. Said it's gonna be so much stronger and, and better on side impacts if we do some downwards as well. Even though we have the X in the middle, some downward 
bars are gonna help a lot. So that is something we've put on the list. We're not gonna ignore it. We just gotta find time to do it. And we wanna make sure that we're not gonna block any other interior panels. I got the rear bumper on here. This is now uh, the, the actual mounting spot, but it unveiled some pretty big problems. These bumpers, man, I know I mentioned this in the last episode. You can just see like this pins out here. This goes super wide. This is flush right here with the body, which is where I wanted it to be. And then it kind of comes in right here, doesn't meet up with the body and we have this huge gap. And when this is flush right here, this point is so far off from meeting up with that point. So that's a problem that we're gonna solve when we go into the bodywork phase. But as far as it being physically attached to the car, it's well attached. Kyle got the side skirt stuff going. So now we're gonna jump into some interior stuff and we gotta start getting the car powered back on, bringing it back to life and making sure the electronics are functioning as we expect. So um, we undid all the wiring harnesses when we stripped this car out. So the, this is the um, tail light wiring harness and it goes to the EVAP canister. So we're gonna have to punch a hole in here, run the wires down to the EVAP, get the tail lights reinstalled, get our grounds reconnected. That's a really big thing. You can see there's like four or five ground wires that all go into this bundle. Don't have that, you're not gonna have a good time. So we're gonna be at least temporarily reconnecting all the grounds, starting to run the wiring harnesses, plugging things back in so we can be ready to turn the car back on for the first time since it's tear apart. Another key piece of the interior is something that Kyle's working on, and these are our Corbo seats for this build. So when the car was wrecked, the seat airbags exploded and uh, they, they were gonna take a lot of upholstery, but also people pretty unanimously didn't love the design on the seats. So I rang up Corbo, they are our seat sponsor, and they hooked us up with these great Corbo seats and we'll show you them um, when they are in the car and I will make sure to put a link in the description, but these are really, really cool seats and they look really nice in classic cars and they also have the really cool diamond stitching. So Kyle's gonna get those all, uh, all bolted together and then they, uh, we actually got, this is the first time we've done this, I think ever we got the correct seat bracket and sliders for the correct car. So now it's just a bolt-in affair. When he, I know you remember the headache on the white Mustang. <laughs> All right, guys, we got the wiring harness ran, grounds grounded. Uh, well, it's not ran permanently, but it's temp ran. And Kyle's got the seats in here. These seats look so good. Let me set them up right real quick. Oscar, you wanna do the honors? I'm gonna pull the, the swoop. I think we made a very good decision with these seats in this car. Like that is a really good fit for a nice classic car. It looks really, really good. Uh, the seats are on brackets, so we're gonna, you know, they'll be slid back a little bit. But damn, that looks really, really nice. So huge thanks to Corbo for uh, hooking us up with these. Link's gonna be in the description. I am very, very pleased with that. So let's start looking at the electrical and what we got and what we don't got. Uh, anybody know where the key is? Okay, good, good start. Kyle, go ahead and apply the battery. So it's giving us this chime. Turn it on to on. Okay, so doors ajar. We know that. Hood's ajar, trunk's ajar, and a tire's low. Yeah, well we don't have any, we ain't got no tire pressure sensor. Well, let's start working on some of these things. Let's hack the hood, let's close the trunk, and, oh, did the, oh yeah, oh, I wanted to test the tail lights. Oh, they look so good. Should we try some blinkers? Oh yeah, looks great. Right blinker? I thought it'd be a little bit more diffusing. This shows up a lot more on camera than it does in person, but you can definitely see where the lower elements are and where the upper elements are. We could say that's on purpose, or it could go through and remake them. At least one's low. They, they match in the low side. They, they match, they match. They match, you, you could just say it's meant to be that way. We should try diffusers before we try to remake them. Yeah, diffusers would go a long ways. Um, for those of you who don't know, diffuser, the idea is we just put something white light could be a piece of paper it could be something in front of it and it'll just really diffuse that led and uh make it make the light beam spread a lot more okay let's work on the hood and the trunk the trunk should work just by closing it it will work oh and then we can test the trunk uh pop too okay trunk is closed double tap this wait don't they're gonna think we're cheating if you have your hand on it it made a sound but it made no pop Okay, it doesn't think the trunk is closed. That's probably the problem. Huh, okay, let's fix the trunk and the hood. 
Well, that was a dumb problem. I didn't uh, plug in the latch and I also welded a, a small plate in front of it. So I'm gonna bust this plate off, uh, plug it in and we'll give it another test run. While we're doing that, um, well, Oscar, how about you jump on that and I'll show you guys through hot wiring the hood. So when we unwire the car, or we detach everything from the car, we label every wire. One of these is gonna say hood pop sensor, hood latch. If a hood latch is two wires, it normally means if you just bridge these two wires together, it's gonna say the hood is close. Normally. Try at your own risk, but that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jam a piece of wire in between the two female parts of the pin, and I'm betting it's gonna say our hood is close. All right, we got our loop. Now that's obviously temporary. Uh, the permanent version would be a lot different looking, but temporary loop and go ahead and reapply power. It no longer thinks the trunk is a jar, so let's try this, double tap. Boom, trunk's open, cool. Uh, yeah, wiring it, uh, attaching the wires definitely helps. Very, very cool. The guy's got the filler plates welded in, as you saw. We've got some seam sealer going on. We ran out of seam sealer, so we got more coming. I'm very, very happy with the way that that is turning out, though. It looks really good. So let's start to go into what we do with the doors and how we figure out the door stuff. Because we had to re we had to refigure it out. We forgot. The last time I think we did this was a uh, long time ago. So here's what I did. I grabbed a door. I ripped the paneling off the door. And I grabbed a multimeter. And I started testing wires. I also pulled the wiring harness up on my computer and it got me confused because there's too many versions of Mustangs. So um, what I was looking for, first thing, was the door latching switch. We can go ahead and, oh, Kyle's working, on, Kyle's working on the car, that's what the dings are. So I was working on the door latching switch, door closed switch, so it doesn't think the door is open or closed anymore. That, in this vehicle, some vehicles it's a little push button, in this vehicle it's part of this module. So I traced all the wires from this module uh, to where that they belong over here. And then I started testing and probing and grounding different things and seeing what different things did when the door was opened and closed. And I found out that this little wire, I don't know, I'll find it. Anyways, there's a white wire in here. It's, uh, it's somewhere in here. This little white wire right here, that goes to ground when the door is closed. So then we correlate this pin, this uh, female plug, to the male plug, and when we ground that same pin to the car, it's gonna think the door is closed. So let's verify my concept right now. All right, after a little bit of learning about how to look at a plug, because you know, plugs are mirrored depending on how you're looking at them front to back. Uh, we got it, we got our jumper in here. So you can see that the car thinks the door is closed. There's no more door open warnings. And now the next thing that we do is we actually put in a sensor to tell when the door is open or closed. So this gets installed right here and we wire the, uh, the ground for the door harness that's right back there and then the, the white pin if you're doing this at home for any reason, which I just can't imagine a lot of you guys are, but anyways, it's the white wire in your door harness, pure white wire. Anyways, black to the white, and then what happens is when this thing gets shut, it, it connects them, and then when it's open, it disconnects them, and then shut is, happens to also mean door shut. So we'll go ahead and get this full thing wired in, and then our car will know when the door is open and closed. We've got this thing set up. Kyle, go ahead and uh, power on the car. Okay, so you can see the car is powered on. And when I open the door, we got the door ajar. And then when I close the door, no more door ajar. Very, very nice. Now, the next thing we're gonna walk, uh, can you unplug the car? Because <laughs> it's really annoying. Oh, you, whoa, see that spark? How did you manage to do that? <laughs> you grounded out the wrench? <laughs> I wonder why it sparked way over there. <laughs> Through a fatty spark. <laughs> Yikes. It's always got to happen on one car. Oscar did it on the Tesla. I haven't done it. Kyle hasn't done it yet. I once wired the Lamborghini battery backwards, so. <laughs> Next up is the door, uh, auto door locks and unlocks. So uh, on the key fob, you've got a lock and an unlock button. We want that to work. How we do that is this time rather than looking at the door I, I actually did just pull up the wiring diagram and also the other thing that i did was i chased all the high gauge wires that ran to the uh the whole latching mechanism and we found the uh we found the pair that is right on the passenger it's violet gray and gray brown and over here we don't know and what we're going to be doing is Oscar's already installed a um, door popper kit that I bought off of eBay. It's a little solenoid that opens and closes and it has two wires that run out. So in a previous episode, Oscar did all the internals for this door. And so he put the door popper in there and that's the green and blue wire that he's run out through there. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in the back of the door. We're going to drill a hole right here. We're going to 
build a nice little wire bundle that we're gonna run through here and then it's gonna go into that same wire bundle that the um, door open close sensor went into and then hopefully when we hit the key fob lock and unlock it will lock and unlock the doors all right you guys ready for the coolness so Oscar went ahead and wired both the doors in um, what are they they're unlocked right now so lock unlock very nice door sensor operational don't care about passengers so I don't get a door sensor anyways so you do that hit it again cars ready to roll modern touches so nice you know what else is nice fresh off the printer our last piece for our front bumper we hope so over the last 48 hours what I've done is I went into I downloaded a, a, a Shelby GT 500 Ford Mustang from a video game and I 3d modeled well, okay, so I've had a rendering that I've been working off of. I don't want to show you guys it yet. I'll show you in the next episode. And um, it it's custom. It's got our custom touches to all the different parts that we want to do and different things like that. So I took the video game car and then I custom modeled our own front bumper and our own styling um, onto the video game car. And then I set the scale based on this car. And we're not sure if that's going to work or not. And this is like the moment of truth. We don't really have enough time to do this all over again. So what we need to do is test it out, assemble the bumper, put it on the car and see if it's gonna work at all. If it's a thing where it's too wide and we just need to take a little out of the middle, we can work with that. If it's a thing where it's a little too narrow and we can just add more in the middle, we can work with that. Almost anything else and we're totally screwed and we're going to plan A, B, C, plan D. So. What we gotta do is post-process these parts and then plastic weld them together so we can get a good valid test fit. Let me show you what we do here. So we chop the bumper into eight different pieces, four different unique pieces that are mirrored then. And uh, we did that so they could print without supports, which I kind of talked about in the last episode. So we printed them all without supports. Here's a very, very fast video of that happening. So they come off the printer with uh, this stuff stuck to the bottom of them and some other things like that. We need to clean up all the edges that join to the other pieces like this. These edges just really got to get cleaned up nicely. And those edges right there, we're going to clean those edges. We're going to sand them up real quickly. We're going to grab the plastic welder and then all of us are going to hold all these edges exactly together and plastic weld them together quick and dirty just to get a good test. And we can always come back and do it more officially if it works. have a bumper. It looks the part. It looks like the 3D model that I did. My biggest worry is that it looks very narrow from right here on the table. Might have did its measurements wrong, but just remember if we just need to add stuff into the middle or maybe add stuff like right there, we can add stuff into any kind of flat place. Anyways, let's just get in the car and see. I'm so nervous. It looks so narrow anymore. Okay, so this would go right here. Um, here, let me far off are you? Let me overlap. I'm like <laughs> right about there. It's really cool. Oh, we broke it. I don't know, but we can fix it. Hey, the really good thing is like this part right here that, that's holding us out. That doesn't need to be there. We can trim it down. We can trim it down. It gives us two inches. That's it's getting really us really close. Let's go weld it back up. <laughs> All right, here we go, round two. Got a little trimmage. So yeah, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, that would live right about there. Now the question, do I order the backup plan just in case? Well guys, we uh, decided to commit to the bumper and there was a slight miscommunication and Kyle just 
got started, which is not a bad thing. Uh, staying, staying on top of it, trying to work on our deadline. So Kyle and I are gonna jump onto this right now. What we're doing now is we're fiberglass reinforcing the bumper. We're basically adding a whole layer, uh, three layers of fiberglass over this bumper uh, to try and basically turn it from being plastic to being fiberglass. So Kyle and I are both gonna work on this together. We're gonna coat it with fiberglass like he's doing now. That's our bottom layer. Sorry, resin, that is resin. Then we're gonna add our sheets of fiberglass, three layers of fiberglass over, over, over. Then we're gonna be adding what is called peel ply. That is some white stuff down there that can go on. It can dry with the resin and the fiberglass and it can be peeled back up. And then finally we add a um, layer of breather cloth. That's this white stuff right here. Breather cloth allows the vacuum system to suck air from all around. So the uh, breather cloth, then we put it in a vacuum bag and we apply vacuum uh, to it, which will suck all the sides down and everything and hopefully get us a nice firm uh, finish with the, the fibers and, and everything being pushed right up against this bumper like it is. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing resined up and glassed up. We got the bumper laid up and the uh, <laughs> vacuum pump on it. Huge success. That was a bit of a fire drill. We kind of weren't ready. We all banded together and got this thing together. And this is the this is the look that we want. The vacuum bag pulling on that, that uh, vacuum cloth and everything sucking all the air out of it and forming exactly to the bumper. That means that we got that fiberglass really, the fiberglass and the resin really pushing up against our, uh, our plastic and the bumper. So that, is really really cool and i have a lot of faith in that uh going right <laughs> the resin it catalyzes so hard i don't know if you can see that it gets so hot steam comes off of it well it's not steam it's like what is that smoke steam, steam? i don't know what it is but could be smoke why not good to breathe it it's hot whatever it is really hot so that in a micro scale is what's going on in here cool stuff so we're gonna leave this overnight um, vacuum pump just keeps on ticking and uh, that'll get this thing to cure exactly the way that we want it, hopefully. Sorry if it seems like we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off. Uh, that's just because we are. I mean, when we're on a tight deadline like this, everybody just disperses and does stuff and we have to do that and we have to stay on that pace or else we fall far behind the deadline. Next up, Oscar is going to go ahead and weld in one more support bar into the cage like our friend the structural engineer said. Gosh, I should really find his name. Hang on. David, thanks David, thank you so much for writing us. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and weld in some support bars for the cage and seat belts. We got the rear down shoot bars welded into the cage area. That looks fantastic. And like our engineer friend said, makes it multiple times stronger. Seat belts welded in and then seat belts uh, fastened in there right in the back. And this right here gets covered by the body panels. So that's not a problem. And uh, seat belts kind of wheel out like that. They have the emergency stop all good stuff. Next up, we're gonna work on getting our side skirts on here. So Kyle has finished the process of kind of getting them to be straighter and not have the exhaust tube, at least to the point where we're ready to get them onto the car and finish the body work out on the car. So we're ready to uh, panel bond these onto the car, but first we gotta get them fit and find a way to like uh, attach them to the car. And then the second step will be panel bonding. Now, before we can do that, there's some welding that needs to happen underneath. So Oscar's gonna finish out welding the bottom rail of the old car to the new car and then we're gonna get the uh, side skirts Clico pinned on here and bracketed on here so we can start thinking about panel bonding them on before the night.
It is time to panel bond. So I kind of want to mention that as far as the Mustangs that we've built and stuff, doing the body swap, classic, fastback, this is as far as we've ever gotten. So this is all new territory for us. What we just did with the bumper stuff, all of that bumper stuff is all 100% new territory for us. Hopefully something that we'll get pretty familiar soon. Uh, but we're, we're getting into new territory here and new things, new experiences for us. We got the side skirt trimmed up. We have to cut the side skirt down there so the fender and the side skirt are one piece and the rest of the car is one piece and that part never comes off. Um, what we did was we left the line of bare metal where we're going to be panel bonding on the bottom, painted everything else with steel it black so it won't be, uh, so it's going to be protected against the elements. And then on the top line right there, we sanded off the primer to prep for our um, panel bond. So panel bonding, we use this crazy stuff. 3M's panel bonding adhesive. It's hardcore. I still don't have a gun for it, so we're just gonna squeeze it out with our hands and mix it up and uh, use some like stir sticks. We'll apply it to the panel. We'll Clico the panel back on and leave that overnight and it should be like really, really super solid. We Now, you know, side skirts sometimes see some abuse because people accidentally step on them and crap, so fingers crossed, but this is the strongest way that we possibly know how to do it. The other thing that you can do too is in the holes that the Clicos are in, before you go to the body fill stage, you can actually send screws through and then sand the heads off of the screws so you have a mechanical connection in there as well as the panel bar. Hey, good morning guys. It's a new day. Now we had a print failure overnight, which is a bummer. That puts us about 10 hours behind on 3D printing, but that's a problem for the next episode. Got the side skirts on. They're looking great. The panel bonding has set up really well. So I'll be pulling these Clicos out and this is ready for the test drive. And obviously in the next episode, we'll start body working these into the car and making them flow and look all perfect and everything. I have seen your guys' comments, A, about the wheels. A lot of people don't like the wheels. A lot of people do like the wheels. Uh, I think once you see the color of the car and everything matching, it'll maybe fit a little bit better. But just in case, I called Koenig and asked them to send me every single wheel that they think might possibly fit to the car. And they said yes because they're that nice and that crazy. So uh, tomorrow we will have a lot more wheels. Follow us on Instagram, BS for Build. Uh, we, it, they actually have a polling system on there so we, I can have you guys vote on wheel choices to hopefully get that better. But also is the wheel arch. And I wanted to mention this, the wheelbase on these two cars is different. Um, the 2019 is different than the 97 and that, that's, that mixed with the dash placement lands this wheel back in the wheel arch, just like an inch. So what we need to do is move the wheel arch an inch and we will be doing that. And that's part of the custom front bumper, custom like over fender, and moving the wheel arch. We'll get that all done probably in the next episode. But from this episode, we're gonna probably have to just cut a little bit, a little bit through here. Before we do that, it's exhaust time. Right here, we've got some exhaust that DNA Motoring sent us. This is uh, for a 350Z, but I really liked, what, what did you call these, Oscar? What, what's this thing called? Holmes device. A Holmes device? <laughs> this is off a of 350Z, but I thought it might work well on the Mustang. We have a very limited amount of space. So I bought a bunch of different stuff. DNA Motoring sent us this. Thanks to DNA Motoring, we appreciate that. Um, so they, they give us our blessing to cut this up and use it anyway. So we have a muffler here, a Holmes device here. We have uh, some glass pack resonators here. And then these are pretty much worthless because I found there's just a piece of triangular metal in the inside and it does nothing. It might actually make stuff louder. So we're not gonna be running those on the car. We're gonna try and find a home for all the rest of this stuff and build out our exhaust because right now it goes catalytic converter, H-pipe, straight pipe out the back, and that's just too loud. I gotta drive this thing a thousand miles. And the goal is to build a daily drivable car that I'm gonna wanna jump into, take to the casino, take out to dinner, use all the time. And honestly, if I have an insanely loud exhaust, I probably won't wanna do that. Moderately loud exhaust is okay.
right, you guys, Oscar did a great job on this exhaust. It looks super killer. I'm excited to see how it sounds. Now, we haven't started this vehicle since we pulled it in here before we cut the entire body off. So, this is gonna be a little new to us, but let's give it a fire up here, hopefully. I like it. Did you turn it off? No. That's not good. That's not good at all. Oh wait, fuel pump? That sounded like a fuel pump. Yeah, that's what it is. No okay. pumps unplugged? Yeah. Woo! When I welded the cage, I unplugged it. <laughs> okay, fuel pump was unplugged. I was like, wow, that, that ran really good until it didn't. <laughs> I had it on our checklist, like wires, grounds, but I didn't, I didn't have like, yeah, you know, things. Plug the fuel pump back in. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Again. Like it doesn't have that high rasp that they usually have. Yeah. I really like that a lot. Oscar's got a new exhaust system on the market. Oscar Exhausts Incorporated. Just send them your Mustang exhaust. I like that. That's good. Okay. Those seats are so comfortable too. I'm very happy about that. You know, sometimes like aftermarket seats are like, you're like, I don't want to drive in these for a long time. Oh, those yeah. are cozy. The GTR. The GTR. <laughs> uh, what are those seats? What brand? Are, well, we don't, need we don't need to talk shit about them. The There's an episode that only has like 2 million views on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got to trim the fender before we can go for a drive. The problem is, is we are really, really running out of sunlight. Like, really running out of sunlight. So, do it quick. I guess we do a quick and dirty trim. Here we go. So overall on this build, you have to have the exhaust really, really low because you lower the car really, really low. But Oscar did a great job. We took that DNA uh, motoring exhaust and added those harmonic pipes to the side of it. Now we have a weird hole for a tail light that we're gonna fill in, so don't worry about that. And then we've notched for the exhaust to get out. But that really made a really, really nice package. And the sound of it is just 
Perfect. I'm so happy with how that turned out. Oscar says he's not sure what the names of those things are, so I'm just gonna call them harmonic devices from now on. Sorry to the probably German man who invented them. Hol Holzman. Oscar is terrible with names. So not counting today, we have seven more days till this car gets on the road for SEMA. The next episode will follow up more with our custom front bumper experience. I can tell you this morning was not fun. And we've got a lot of work to do, but we're gonna try and salvage it. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace! <laughs>